All right, welcome to our conference presentation. We are family, creating a culture of respect in the elementary classroom. My name is Paige Hamilton. I am Ben Blanchard. Today we'll also be hearing from Madeline Dyer and John Kaczynski. And between the four of us, we are second, third, and fourth grade teachers all across the country. And we're gonna be talking about building respect in our classrooms. So just a little bit of context, we're talking about the relationship between respect and behavior. How does this manifest itself in the classroom? So just some statistics to ground us here, 53% of teachers who have transferred schools cite that student behavior is the reason that they transfer. And similarly, 44% of teachers who leave the profession altogether also cite student behavior is their reason for doing this. So when we think about building respect, we wanna know what are those strategies and how can we cultivate that here? So our main question is what can we as teachers do to cultivate classroom cultures of respect and community? So today we're gonna to be doing this through first a discussion of why respect is important. So why um, should we be talking and learning about this? Why is it important for us as teachers as well as the context of where we're thinking about this happening? So um, after that, we're gonna be moving to a definition of respect. So what is respect in the context of ourselves and the self, um, others, and then a community as a whole? And then we'll move to talking about the implications of these findings for ourselves as elementary and middle school educators and then um, lastly, we'll be talking about some really important takeaways with strategies that we can actually take and use in our classrooms moving forward. So by the end of our presentation today, we hope that you will all be able to define the three domains of respect and apply strategies of cultivating respect in our classrooms moving forward. So why respect? So um, we'll be thinking about what um, the purpose is for why we need respect so much in our classroom, as well as um, the developmental context of our students at the elementary and middle school level. So one thing that's really important to understand um, fundamentally about respect is that we want our students to be intrinsically motivated to respect themselves, respect others, and respect their community as a whole. We also need to remember that our students do not exist in a vacuum they um, need to learn and develop their identity and respect in multiple contexts and environments. So school is one of these contexts, but we need to make sure that we're aware of cultivating respect um, through all the different contexts that our students experience life. We also want to remember that our students um, are going to have long-term effects from whether our classroom has a culture of respect or not. So studies show that with um, respect, the in respectful classrooms with positive um, student to student interactions as well as positive teacher to student interactions, those um, students um, have a much higher likelihood of being resilient and learning more in school and having better long term outcomes. Conversely, in classrooms without respect, um, especially when aggressiveness or hostility are present, research shows that those students very often um, develop senses of hostility and aggression in themselves and that those have very negative long term effects because that aggression and hostility that they learn in a negative or hostile classroom will stick with them as they move forward throughout their lives. Okay, so we are going to talk about the three domains of respect. So defining respect in terms of self, in terms of others, and in terms of community. So first, we're gonna look at self-respect in the classroom. Before we look at the classroom as a whole, it's important to look at the individual needs of the students. So students need to internalize respect of themselves in order to contribute to the larger community. When we look at this, this means autonomy, belongingness, and competence. So autonomy is students know their own abilities in the classroom. Belonging, students feel as though they have a part in their space and competence, students feel able to achieve and work. In terms of development, we're also looking at identity and brain development. So teachers need to be really intentional with practices such as metacognition, having students think about the way they think in the classroom, self-assessment, students should be able to assess their own development in the classroom. Self-regulation in terms of emotional and social learning, this is a really big thing that teachers need to focus on. And also identity formation, students need to know who they are and what they bring to the classroom. So our second domain is respect of others in the classroom. You really wanna foster that pro-social environment. So all students should really have that sense of belongingness when they come into the classroom. So we've looked at the student as himself and now in terms of how they interact with others.
They also need to know empathy. So teachers really need to cultivate that sense of empathy and understanding where another person comes from. Collaboration skills are also a big thing teachers need to focus on in respect of others in the classroom. So how can we work together as students? And finally, building relationships as protective factors. So students are able to actually interact in a way that creates, creates a safe space for everyone involved. So moving into our third domain, which is interdependence in classroom community. We move from the self to others, to the entire community. We build on this with our first point of shared responsibility to help others. Not only does this manifest itself through collaboration, but it's that individual onus that is moved from the self to others that each individual in the classroom feels like they are integral to the entire culture. And that is mainly on the teacher to create, and we move there through steps, if you will, and that's kind of what Kusik shows. Moves from group cohesion, which is toleration of each other, to appreciation of diversity, which again is an appreciation level. And ultimately, we'd like to move to an embracing level. And that's not only going to elicit more individual differences, which are highlighted through the diversity, but if people feel comfortable to share that side of themselves and that diversity, it's only gonna harbor more respect in that classroom culture. Moving on to lastly, if we have morally educated students, students who are thinking through the context of I am that, I want to do that, and so this is for me, if we can prime their brains like that, we are gonna have a morally sound classroom. And if you dictate that flow as the teacher, not dictating what they think, but you prime them on how they think, we're gonna think more unifiably as a classroom, and that is ultimately the goal of creating that culture. We're gonna create that culture also through our relationships. As Madeline just said, that belongingness, if we take an interest beyond just academics with our students, we develop real relationships in which they feel comfortable and welcome and related to and that they belong and then that diversity is celebrated, it's going to foster a positive learning environment. And then as we've already talked about through Samaroff, um, the development through multiple contexts and specifically habits start at a young age. We know about brain malleability and all of these things. So if we can start building that respect and showing them what respect looks like in a group environment, that's hopefully going to prime them for the future and again, respect is a transferable skill, which is the ultimate goal. So the third part of our presentation, the implications. Now that we have context and a working definition and what it is and what it looks like, what does this imply? What does this carry over to two uh, developmental areas, elementary and middle school? So our first one, elementary, which is more of what we are well-versed in being elementary school teachers. Um, the first thing is that moral and character education. It's a big, big implication. We are building citizens for the future, and we want them to have a framework and a lens in which they can transfer this knowledge of respect, this lens of respect that we have laid for them, and they can apply it to the future. That is our goal as teachers. We're raising just and right human beings. Another implication is starting off on day one. As of all good routines, you need to start on day one, but specifically, if you want to build a culture that centers around respect, we need to start right away. We need to model self-respect, and that's you know, probably self-evident at this point, but we are the model when it comes to mainly everything in our students' lives, let alone self-respect, let alone an entire classroom culture of self-respect. And as just briefly mentioned, uh, developmental outcomes are more malleable in the early stages. So as elementary school teachers, our brains are always malleable. We know about neuroplasticity, but especially with the elementary school, we need to take every day every decision down to the, the smallest level and to understand our impact, that we need to take advantage of this and utilize it to its biggest usefulness. So as teachers, we also have the benefit of recognizing the transitions that our students make, particularly from this transition of elementary school into middle school. So while we are not middle school teachers ourselves, we recognize our role in setting our students up for success as they're aging and as they're entering adolescence. So we recognize the period of middle school as a time that can be very tumultuous for students, given their physical changes and also the emotional changes that they're going through as they're experiencing this. So we just wanna shed a little bit of light on what these implications are for continuing to cultivate respect in the middle school classroom. So 
Mostly our framework is the same. We want to continue to create a culture of authentic respect of self and of others, especially as students are becoming more socially aware of themselves and how they fit into the social context of their middle school classrooms. These are the things that we wanna be particularly aware of and especially sensitive to as students are growing. So again, this begins with setting up individuals for success and helping them to model these behaviors as we help them to grow into grow and mature into adulthood here. How we set students up in middle school will eventually help them to be set up for high school and beyond. So beginning to think about these elements of respect and how we can teach students to do this up front is ultimately setting them up for success in the future. So we continue to emphasize our focus on the self and of respect for others and also the elements of respect that make them a part of a community, especially as students are beginning to see themselves as full contributors to a community. They are recognizing that the world is not simply acting on them as much anymore as they grow in their sense of autonomy. And as they mature, they recognize their ability to contribute to something that is larger to themselves. So we recognize that giving students more independence in these ways, giving them choices, letting them be the makers of the culture in their classroom of respect, are going to be ways that we can honor that in these students and that we can continue to help them to grow in these ways. So ultimately, we can talk about ideas of respect and how we can do that in our classrooms here. And we wanna talk about what are some key strategies and conclusions that we can make from this presentation of how we can talk about respect in the classroom. So for key strategies, as we've talked through this presentation, our goal is that we can hopefully realize that respect does not simply come from rules and regulations in a classroom. It is not just coming from classroom management procedures alone. While these ideas are important, we recognize that there's a both and here to the strategies that we need in order to cultivate a classroom culture of respect. This comes from both a procedural planning and an emotional responsiveness that we can have in the classroom. So just some simple ways that we can do this. We know that the first days of school are the most important in setting up the environment that we want students to feel their safe and welcoming environment to be. With that, we set up procedures that are firm and fair and consistent. And these are ways that we can continue to establish routines for our students and also contribute to the social norms of respect that we make in the classroom. With that, we continue to remind students that it's not only the first days of school that we talk about respect, that we're presenting this to them in multiple ways and that they can expect to see these throughout the year because again, we are establishing this as a moral character development of this is who we are, not simply something that we do. In addition, we can talk about meaningful reinforcement and meaningful reinforcement schedules. How can we continue to encourage students that this is not something that should only be extrinsically motivated, but that this is something that they are internalizing here? Once again, as we think about how we discipline students, we want our ideas of discipline to be rooted in social and emotional learning because we know that our students are emotional beings and that they are continuing to develop um, in these ways as well. With that, we move into the emotional responsiveness. What is the role of the teacher and being emotionally responsive to their students. These are things like opening up conversations. In the elementary classroom, we talk about a morning meeting or simply a time of community where we have opportunities for conversations of students to share ideas, share what's on their heart, but also that's a chance for students to get to know each other. As students learn more about each other, that's how we build empathy. This is how we build relationships. And that ultimately is what leads to a culture of respect. In addition, teachers can listen to student feedback and actually implement it. As we are honoring students' autonomy and their competence, the teacher ha teachers have the role of being able to listen to their students and to actually listen to what they're saying and to implement their own ideas so that they can see that their ideas are honored in that way. With our conversations, we can talk about that further identity development and the importance of diversity and the acceptance and celebration of diversity in our classrooms which is absolutely crucial as students are, again, seeing themselves and how they fit into the world around them and how they are also contributors to that environment. We can continue to talk about communication that goes between teachers communicating with students and also building relationships with families as well. How can we as teachers get to know our families and know our students and their lives better? Finally, we talk about the idea of teachers modeling self-respect. If we're teaching our students that self-respect is an important element of respect in the classroom, teachers also need to model this sense of efficacy within themselves. 
So our confidence that we bring into the classroom of how we can build respect, students feed off of that, that they feed off of this energy and they also are able to return respect in the classroom as we model it as well. And pulling from all of those key strategies, our conclusions with our research on respect in the classroom is mainly that classroom needs to be a community. There's a shared responsibility and sense of belongingness from teachers and from students, and they know where they fit in in this classroom dynamic. Also, as Catholic educators, we hear this a lot, but really focusing on education of the whole person. So our research found that in terms of the whole person, it's important to pay attention to the emotional, cognitive, and cultural identities of our students and all of the things they bring with them into the classroom. For teachers, it's not enough to just have the relationship, you also need strategies. So having strategies and relationships, putting those procedures in place, and also creating a space where students feel comfortable to talk and be themselves and have that sense of belonging. That's education of a whole person. Overall, the goal is to foster a positive sense of self so you can collaborate in classroom and beyond. So beyond the four walls of the classroom, what does respect look like? And in Catholic education, that looks like human flourishing. So coming together to learn in a community. And then here are our references for our research. Thank you so much for watching. We look forward to being in discussion with you soon. Thank you.